with the amount of people that are using exogenous ketones, if they really did everything that they claimed, don't you think we'd have a lot more like magical people running around? Okay, I'm not just trying to say that exogenous ketones are bad at all. There is by all means, a very practical use for them, but I want to be able to outline the five worst possible times that you would be taking exogenous ketones. And I also want to clear up some just misunderstandings that are out there surrounding them, and quite frankly, some of the mismarketings that are out there, if that's a word. So exogenous ketones are not going to give you the magical effect of ketones, okay? We have to get very, very clear here that Ketones do not drive fat burning. Ketones are a consequence of fat burning. When our insulin levels are low, because we're not consuming a lot of carbohydrates, and fatty acids get liberated out of the fat tissue into the bloodstream, they travel to the liver, and they get turned into what's called acetyl coenzyme A. Well, when our insulin levels are low, there are special enzymes that convert that acetyl coenzyme A into a ketone. So a ketone is manufactured as a result of burning fat, not the ketone being the driver of the fat loss. If anything, adding more ketones in might stand in the way of that a little bit. But again, it needs a full explanation because ketones aren't bad. Let's break it down. Hey, after this video, I'd like you to check out something called Juve. If you've heard of red light therapy, it sounds like something really, really weird, because it kind of is, but it's also really, really cool. Red light therapy is a way to improve your mitochondrial function. So red light therapy uses specific wavelengths of red light because mitochondria, the energy powerhouse within our cell, can actually receive and understand light. They learned this back with astronauts when they realized that plants would grow under red light, realizing they were actually providing a way to create ATP. So long and the short of it is, like the 49ers, other NFL teams, they're utilizing red light therapy in their recovery and all kinds of different things. So Juve is a company that has like an on-the-go device, which is super cool. So if you wanna like, you know, use it on your knee or use it to kind of boost recovery a little bit, might be an interesting thing to try out. And there's a special link down below for you to give them a try if you wanna check them out. They've been a sponsor on this channel for about three years now and I talk about them in a lot of videos. So that link is down below after this video. So jumping right into it first, exogenous ketones that you're finding like usually in a jug are going to be what are called ketone salts. And ketone salts are what is called a racemic mix of L beta hydroxybutyrate and D beta hydroxybutyrate. A racemic salt means they are opposing each other, but very similar. So it's like mirror images, it's like my right hand and my left hand. They're like the same, but they're mirrored. So LBHB and DBHB are very similar, but different. We don't really know what LBHB does in the body, but we do know what DBHB does in the body. For example, when you look at a study that was published in the journal Frontiers of Physiology, it found that like in a research setting, a ketone monoester, which we can't even get our hands on outside of the research world, that'll drive up ketone levels three to four times higher than a ketone salt. Because a ketone salt, like you get in the normal like consumer world, that's D and L, B, H, B bound to sodium, potassium, calcium. That's the only way they can get it to balance. That's enough biochemistry for now. Let's talk about when not to take them. One, if your main goal with ketosis is weight loss, it turns out that exogenous ketones can stand in the way of fat burning. More so, they stand in the way of lipolysis. Okay, it's a survival thing. Ketosis is a mechanism that we go into when we are technically in starvation mode. So from a survival standpoint, if we were producing a bunch of ketones and we were starving more and started producing more ketones, if we produced more ketones by just getting deeper into ketosis or starving more, eventually we'd go into ketoacidosis. So that means producing so many ketones that your body can't handle it. So as a protective mechanism, the body has established a feedback loop where it recognizes that, uh-oh, ketones are getting too high, so let's stop the liberation of fats so that we don't accidentally produce more ketones. So when our ketone levels are high and we're driving it up super high with exogenous ketones, we're sending a signal to not release more fat and impairing lipolysis. Now, from a weight loss perspective, I will say that exogenous ketones are phenomenal for satiety. So you may want to implement them at a time when you would normally get hungry and just have them instead. But if your main goal is fat loss, don't take them to try to drive more fat loss. The next one is during a fast. Do not take exogenous ketones during a fast, okay? For one reason, 
just like I mentioned before, you're impairing lipolysis. Okay, you want to mobilize fat and burn it during a fast. If you're having ketones, though, then you are slowing that process down, just like I mentioned before, because you're impairing the mobilization. But secondly, gastrointestinal distress. Okay, there's a lot of minerals. We're talking two, three grams of sodium, potassium, calcium all coming in at once. And when you're fasted, you don't have anything to balance it. So you have this hyperosmolaric effect where water is gonna rush into your colon, rush into your gut, therefore cause diarrhea, which is gonna cause you to evacuate even more minerals and cause this whole like imbalance there. So I would just be very careful. If you can handle it from a GI perspective, then maybe you can test it out. But the question that's going to come up is, does it break a fast? Yes. Okay, we have to remember that fasting is driven by an AMPK rate. Okay, how high is our AMPK, which is a sensor for energy in our body? So if we are not consuming food, we want AMPK to go up because that indicates, oh, no food. Let's mobilize all the fat and stuff like that. And that is dependent upon what is called an ATP to ADP ratio. If we're not producing a lot of ATP, not producing a lot of energy, the ATP to ADP ratio goes down. Okay, well, Ketones, when you take in an exogenous ketone, it by all means drives up the ATP to ADP ratio, thereby bringing down AMPK. That is a very complicated way of saying it breaks a fast through multiple mechanisms, okay? Now let's move into the next one. Number three, do not take exogenous ketones before or after any kind of heavy glycolytic exercise. Okay, around endurance work, there's a lot of evidence that it's great. Okay, it can preserve glycogen so you can actually go further and go longer. So endurance work, phenomenal. Pre-workout, post-workout with more intense glycolytic work, not so much. There's a study that was published in the journal Medicine and Science in Sports and Exercise that found that ketones only contribute to about two to 4% of oxygen consumption during exercise anyway. So first of all, it's a nominal, like doesn't do much anyway. It doesn't provide us with additional energy during a workout. But what's most important is ketones inhibit glycolysis. They inhibit the ability for our cells to use carbohydrates very well during a workout. That's why when you're naturally in ketosis, nutritional ketosis, when you work out, your ketone levels go down. It's not an efficient fuel source for you during a workout. Your body still wants to use the carbs during the intense workout. So why on earth would you drive up ketones and actually blunt the ability for your muscles to use glycogen and carbs? That's what they're running on. Even if you're not eating carbs, you have carbs stored in your body. So your carbs get released and you burn those during your workouts. But if you have ketones, your body's gonna use the ketones and that's gonna blunt the ability to use the glycogen. That's not a good thing. We don't really want that. So don't use them around your workouts. The next one is don't have them when you're super stressed out. This simply comes from the mineral piece. If you were using like a ketone diester, monoester, possibly you know some of these other esters that are available, and I'm not being paid by any company, I'm not even gonna mention a name, then it might be different. But most of the ketone salts that are out there have so much sodium in them, we're talking like three, four, five grams, we're talking a lot, that if you're stressed out and you already have somewhat high blood pressure, this could drive it up in a very dangerous way. And I'm just being very cautious there. And I'm someone that really is pretty loose on the whole blood pressure thing. I really don't like lean into that too much, but a lot of sodium during a stressful time could be bad. And the next one is not to take them when you are fighting an infection. Ketones are anti-inflammatory, okay? But when you drive up ketones so high, but the exogenous ketones, you could blunt the good effects of inflammation during an infection. Let's say you have an open wound that's infected. You, you need your body to fight that. You don't wanna mitigate inflammation. A natural mitigation, like a little bit, you know, from an anti-inflammatory standpoint with your diet, yeah, sure, that's fine. But going overboard and driving ketones super high, it's just not the good time to take it. You want your body to do its job. I'm gonna end with a super positive study on exogenous ketones though. Granted, this is a study that comes from a ketone monoester in a research setting, but it found that if you gave a ketone monoester to an obese individual, it improved their postprandial glucose tolerance significantly. So I guess my end saying with this is, exogenous ketones play a much better role in people that are already consuming carbs, not people that are doing ketosis. Ketosis, you're giving yourself an exogenous fuel that's standing in the way of producing more of the fat burning. But for someone that's consuming carbs, they could actually help condition a cell to be able to tolerate those carbohydrates better and improve insulin sensitivity. So there's a lot of positive things with exogenous ketones. We just wanna make sure we're using them right. I'll see you tomorrow.